Hi, this is Trey from SoFly. In this video, I'm going to show you how to import WooCommerce orders using WPL import in our WooCommerce add-on. Let's go ahead and create a new import. Now we'll upload our file and we'll select WooCommerce orders from the drop-down and continue to step two. On this step, you could add filtering options if you wanted to only import certain orders, but in this case, we want to import all 64 records. So we're going to continue to step three. Okay, here we can select the order status. If all of your orders have the same status, you can just select the status that you need. Otherwise, you can use the set with the XPath option to use an element from your file to set the status. So we'll use that option here and drag in our status element. Now we'll set the date to the order date element in our file. You could also set the date here if you'd like. Now in this section, the first thing we need to do is decide how we're going to match the customers to the orders. So you can match existing customers by one of these four fields, fields if you'd like. Uh, we have the emails, but you got to keep in mind that if no customer is found, then the order will be skipped. So if you don't have existing customers, then you want to import as guest customer down here. Now, in our case, we do have some guest orders, but we also have emails for existing customers. So we're going to select if no match found, import as guest customer, and we're going to drag in all of the billing information. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Address, address two, city, school. Email and phone. Okay, and I need to drag in the email up here to match our existing customers as well. Perfect. Okay, now let's go to the shipping tab. Here you can choose to copy from billing or import the shipping address. It's also possible to click here and then if order has no shipping info, you can copy from billing. But in this case, we're just going to copy from billing. You can also import a note here. All right, and then in payments, you can select your payment method from the drop down, or you can choose to set with XPath. Setting with XPath would be useful if you had multiple payment methods that were used, for example, PayPal, Stripe, and Check, or something like that. But in our case, we just have check payments, so we're going to click check. And if you had a transaction ID, you can import it there. And here's where we need to match the products. So if no product is found, the order will be skipped. So if you don't have existing products, you'll definitely want to manually import the product order data in this section here. You can add product meta, put the price, separate multiple, multiple products by a separator of your choosing. But we do have the product information and they exist on the site. So I'm going to go ahead and drag in the SKU here and the quantity and the item total into the price. Now we'll go to fees. I actually don't have any fees in this example, but here's where you'd import the fees. Now here's where you import the coupon, coupon information. And I think order two actually had a coupon used. There we go. Yeah, so we'll drag in coupon code, the discount amount, and you can separate multiples by a separator you're choosing. And now we'll go to the shipping. Shipping information is right here, so the name here, cost, and you can choose the shipping method or you can set with XPath, which we have an element with the shipping method, so we'll use that. And the separator down here. Now we'll go to taxes. So let me find the tax information right here. Total amounts. And you could select the standard tax one if you wanted to, or you can drag in the rate code and the separator down here. Now here's where you'll drag in the refund information. So let's go ahead and grab that down here. The amount, the reason, the date, and if you have issuer information you can put it here but if no issuer is found it'll be left blank or you can just choose to do that, do that by default. So we'll do that and go to total you can set the order total manually if you want, or you can let WPL import calculate it. And we're going to let WPL import do that. So we'll move down to the notes. And here's the note information, the note content. You can choose the note dates. The visibility, you can select a value or set with XPath, which we have an element with this information. So we'll drag that in. And the username and 
emails. Make sure we're using the right separator here. Yep, perfect. Okay. If you have custom fields that are tied to your orders, you can import them here. We don't in this example, so we'll go ahead and continue. Here we need to select a unique identifier. So in an orders import, it's actually different than other imports. Rather than a unique ID for each record, you need a unique ID for each order. That way, if you have separate records for the same order with different products, they'll be merged together. For example, let's look here. We have order ID 112 for 1. Let's skip to 3, and we have 77. Let me check 2. 2 is 114. Okay, so go back to 3. So we have 77, 77, that's the same order. So these products will be merged into the same order. Same order. Six, we're still in 77. And then record 8, there, there's a new order. And then 8 and 9, those products will go into the same order. And then record 10 will be a new order. And so on and so forth. So that's how it works. You just need to make sure that all the products that go to the same order have the same order ID. And you use that as a unique identifier. And down here, we'll block email notifications during the import, which is selected by default. Now let's look at the advanced options. We don't need to change any of this here, actually. So we'll just close that out. And continue. Oh, I need to pull in the order ID at the unique identifier there. OK, and we'll continue. And let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to pause the video while this completes. OK, it's complete. And you will see this notice about duplicate records, but that's OK, because like I explained, this actually is normal for an orders import you have to have duplicates to merge the products into the same order so let's look at the 37 orders that we imported here let's take a look at the top one 152 and that was tied to an existing customer we have all of our products here the tax the total amounts everything looks good there and then we can take a look at one more order uh, this is a guest order, and this has the refunds, and everything looks good. So that does it. That's how you will import WooCommerce orders using WPL Import and our WooCommerce add-on. Thank you very much for watching.